Icarus was the son of the famous craftsman Daedalus in Greek mythology. His father was the creator of the Labyrinth, a huge maze located under the court of King Minos of Crete, where the Minotaur, a half-man half-bull creature lived. In order for the secret of the Labyrinth to be kept, Minos had then imprisoned Daedalus and Icarus in a tower above his palace. Daedalus managed to create two sets of wings for himself and his son, that were made of feathers glued together with wax. He taught Icarus how to fly and warned him not to fly too high, which would cause the wax to melt, nor too low, which would cause the feathers to get wet with sea water. Together, they flew out of the tower towards freedom. However, Icarus soon forgot his father's warnings, and started flying higher and higher, until the wax started melting under the scorching sun. His wings dissolved and he fell into the sea and drowned. The area of the sea where he fell took the name Icarian Sea after him, while a nearby island was named Icaria. So why am I telling you about Icarus? Largest detector of its kind arrives at Fermi Lab in Illinois. Guess who made it, CERN? A few days ago, a needle could have dropped at the Fermi Lab, and the record of the world would have skipped. One scientist quietly held her cell phone up and took a few photos, then stopped and stared. The Fermi lab scientist could not help but reflect a bit on the large box sitting on a flatbed that contained half of the Icarus liquid argon particle detector, at 60 feet long and 120 tons the largest of its kind, which she will work with when it's installed and running by the end of the year. The detector Wednesday finished its month-long trip from CERN, Europe's premier particle physics laboratory, in Switzerland, to the Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory in Batavia. She has been working on several neutrino experiments at Fermi Lab, and also spent time at CERN looking at Icarus, when it was being refitted and packed for its trip, being given a bunch of new stuff inside, as she put it. Now it was finally in Batavia, and she was taking it in, almost breathless. Yet. She said, quietly, when asked if she were excited. It's cool. As a strange smile went across her flushed face. The detector began its scientific life under a mountain at the Italian National Institute for Nuclear Physics Gran Sasso National Laboratory in 2010, recording data from a beam of subatomic particles called neutrinos sent by CERN. The detector was shipped to CERN in 2014. At Fermi Lab, the machine will be part of a suite of three detectors dedicated to searching for a new type of neutrino beyond the three that have been found. One of the reasons for the excitement over the new detector is that neutrinos are hard to detect, James said. That means scientists could have a better chance of finding the fourth, or sterile neutrino with the Icarus detector, because Fermi Lab can throw as many neutrinos as possible from its powerful beam at the large detector. It's like a numbers game, to get as much in the detector as possible, she said. But how much is too much, some have asked. Neutrinos are talked about in terms of having flavors in that they change as they move through space. So, a neutrino is different when detected at different places along the way. With the three detectors now at Fermi Lab, neutrinos will be observed at three different lengths over a short baseline. Another separate experiment at Fermi Lab observes them over a long baseline by shooting them from Fermi Lab to Minnesota. Eventually, they will be shot to a detector to be built in South Dakota that will be so big, it will dwarf the Icarus. No other particle does this morphing like neutrinos, she said. At one time, they were thought to not have mass, but it was discovered they do. The significance in the particle physics world is that the standard model does not predict mass for neutrinos, she said. Finding that they do have mass, and finding the fourth neutrino, challenges what is currently known in particle physics. It's another way of looking beyond the standard model, she said. Will South Dakota become the new CERN? Will we fly too close to the sun, just as Icarus did? Stay paranoid my friends.